Uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite Ben up to give a presentation about BotKit and a bot that he's built and some stuff that we're working on. So let's give him a round of applause. Hello. Um, is it safe to say that most of you people know about uh, BotKit? Raise your hand if you don't know anything about BotKit. Okay, Peter, you're lying. Um, so, uh, uh, BotKit is a tool. Uh, hold on, let me just move my screens around here really quick. Am I messing this up? No. Wait a minute. How do I screen? Oh. I want to screen share that screen. Screen share. <laughs> Can I just do the whole screen? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm good. Eric told me I was doing this talk at 625. No, I'm just kidding. So BotKit is an open source toolkit for building bots. And it takes care of all the technical details that you need to worry about, about like sending and receiving messages from Facebook or Slack or uh, Cisco Spark or uh, a host of other platforms that are available. And it also provides tools that are sort of like semantically designed around, uh, um, to like mirror how we like actually talk to one another. So there are functions in BotKit like uh, ask and say and reply. Um, and the structure um, that you know the, that operates your user interface in BotKit is called conversation. Um, and conversations have like beginnings and middles and ends. And so in BotKit code, you can basically sort of set up this conversation structure and then tie your code, the application code that's gonna do your like API calls or your database reads and writes to those parts of the conversation, right? Like before the conversation starts, I gotta load my user information. And after, after the conversation ends, I have to like store the results in a database. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Wow, look at all those nodding heads. It's like I do this all the time. Um, so um, on top of, so Botka is an open source tool uh, um, that you can get off of NPM and uh, build, build with. But we also have a tool called Botkit Studio, which is like a web hosted uh, environment for configuring Botkit and like managing the conversation sort of shape and style. Um, when you have a, you know, it's easy to start off with bots and like build everything in code. You know, it's like, oh, I asked the question, I gave the response. But um, it, for a lot of reasons, you know, it's good to externalize the like user interface elements that control your, your bot from that actual code. Like it makes your code a lot easier to maintain. And you know, like if there's anything I've learned from, you know, 20 years of building software for the web, it's like you want to separate those pieces out, right? Um, so that's what that's one of the big things that Botkit Studio can do. It also like will allow you to deploy a Botkit, a fully configured Botkit bot, to like Heroku or to Glitch, which is a hosting service. Like in just a couple of minutes, that was what we were originally going to show. But like, you can do it. It takes like three minutes. So just go and do it yourself. And I'm going to show you what I did with that um, as in like my free time because I love bots. And um, I'm a nerd about this stuff, and um, I thought this was, would be cool to talk about rather than just showing you it getting all set up. Um, so, pause. Does anybody, did anybody play like Muds or Moos as a kid? You, you date yourself if you say yes. Um, no, okay, so as a kid in the 90s, when I would like dial up to the internet and like hack around the library's um, menu system to get like free access to the internet, which was before the web, there were these things called MUDs and MOOs, which were like massive, or what I don't even remember what, multi-user dungeon, that MUD. And what basically it was a chat room, like sort of like IRC, but in that chat room there would be sort of like rooms that you'd be in and the room would be a, have a description and it would be like items in that room that you could interact with. It was sort of like one of those Zork games, but like online and like people would build these things. And the way you would build them is you'd like log into the mud or moo and it would be like, you're in the beginner room. There are no doors or exits and there's no description. And then you'd be like, dig a door or like open a door west to 
like the first room. And then from then on, you could like go west to the next room. And then there's like another room where you could like create items and like make doors and stuff. So you'd like build the, room, the, build the world like that. I spent a lot of time doing that kind of stuff as a kid, uh, which is why I started a chatbot company. Um, but, uh, and one of the things that I always thought like would be cool would be to have that kind of functionality like in Slack or like in my workplace because you can create these sort of experiences that like happen just around you and it like adds a feeling of like reality to the like virtual reality that we have in the chat room. So I did it um, and I used BotKit to do it and I call it the Wizard of Frosgurt um, because I'm weird. Um, and you can install this on your Slack team right now. It's at dmbot.glitch.me, but it's a work in progress. Um, but once you, where's the Slack window? Once you install it, um, you get a bot called DM on your, um, your team, which is like Dungeon Master. And it adds, you know, when you talk to that bot, it has a bunch of commands. And so like you can craft items by talking to the bot like inside Slack. So I'm gonna say like craft is uh, new. Um, and hopefully, that, okay, what do you wanna call this new item? Sword. How should this sword be described? A magical sword with glowing blue power. Okay, and he says, got it. Poop. With a puff of sparkles, the sword appears in your inventory. Sweet. Okay, so now I can like look at sword and, and I can see it in my inventory. <laughs> and I can, so, so cool, right? Right, I have I created a sword. Um, now I can like add a verb to the sword. This is like the key magic of what was, was so awesome in Muds and Moves is that like, not only can you create a chair and drop it in the room, but then you can say like, I can sit in that chair or I can like scooch the chair or like all these things. And like then you're like having, you can like sort of role play. So what verb do I want to add to the sword? I want to like wield the sword. Hmm. So there's a couple of cool, well, I'll start with the simple stuff like mm, user lifts the sword menacingly. Okay, cool. Wield sword. Boom. Eric wields, lifts the sword menacingly. Now I can go over here into general. Oh God, wield sword. Boom. So like now that's like a command that's available in like any channel that the bot is available in as long as Eric's there and he's holding the sword in that channel, but he could drop that sword in the channel and then anybody in that channel could wield the sword. Okay. So let me pause because I don't have that much time. Tell me if I'm, tell me my, my schedule here. Uh, if I'm good, if I'm okay. How do I do that? So here in BotKid Studio, I have a craft script. Uh, if I didn't say craft new, it says, oh, hey, do you wanna create a new item or do you wanna start from scratch? So there's like a button to guide you to the next thing, but I said craft new, so this is what this is. What do you wanna call this item? That's a question. It gets stored in a variable named name. You can see that right there. And uh, I did a little validation there so like people don't like put in regular expressions as the name of the, thing so it like breaks my regular expression checker. So how should name be described, right? That's like a back reference to the variable that the user just said. And then that's stored in description. And then, the, then it says, got it. And then you see here it says, jump to the crafted thread, which actually says like, okay, with the puff of sparkles, this item has been created. To actually create that, I switch over to my code. And here is like a skill in my bot kit studio starter kit. So this is like, vanilla starter kit that I just installed and I create this one little thing before the crafted thread starts extract the responses from the, con the conversation I just had which is going to be name description and I use the like built-in simple storage system to like get a user object out of the database add 
this item to an array and then store it back into the database. So, so I've done the action now that like I'm going to display in that final thread and um, I can, if, if it failed, I could have like switched to another thread that said like, crap, like my magic didn't work and your item did not get stored in the database or whatever. So again, like totally abstracted business logic about the, you know, inserting and managing the like object, data object uh, separated from the extent, you know, customizable and, and you know, continually editable interface that is that defines the like user experience and dialogue that the person has. Sweet. Okay. DM. Um, just add another verb to this guy. So what you can also do here is uh, say like, let's see, menace. Um, user menaces user two with the magical sword. So because I put like user two in there, if I now say menace, uh, use sword to menace. It's like, oh, what, who do you want to do that with, right? Because like it didn't fulfill the requirements. But if I say like use sword to menace Ben Brown, ah, cool. Um, so let, let's take a look really quick about how that works. Um, so one of the like crazy things about Slack bots is that you hear like every message that anybody says in any channel, regardless of whether they send it to your bot or not. So you can like listen for what we call ambient messages, which is like any message that is not directed at the bot um, and do stuff with it. You can't do that on like Cisco Spark or Teams or like any of the more serious uh, platforms because their customers won't let them. Um, so <laughs> this is one of my favorite kind of things. Like we talk about like machine learning and uh, AI and stuff at these things all the time, but like the vast majority of the time I'm just like cheating this stuff with like super easy brute force techniques. So how do I figure out if the person mentioned an item or a verb in the thing. Like in the, ch I load up that user's inventory and the channel's inventory, and I look for every single item in that list and whether or not it was mentioned in that str string. And then I look through every single verb that might be associated with that, and I do the same thing. And if those two things both exist, like wield and sword exist anywhere in that string, good enough, right? So that gives me, uh, Menace Ben Brown, the, the command, or sorry, menace, sword menace. <laughs> right, matched. Or I could say like, take the fucking sword and menace God, that idiot Ben Brown. Boom, magical machine learning algorithm of understanding this wide variety of commands that were created dynamically in the chat room, you know, two minutes ago. All right, so what, there's nothing to take. What does that mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> there's like some weird things that I, like this is what happens when you do these things. Uh, this is one of my, uh, let's see, I could say like, Craft a new puppy, cute puppy, and then quirk of my code, adverb, oops, too fast, got ahead of the bot, puppy, Bark, 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 bark. So now anytime anybody says puppy of any kind, it will say bark, 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 bark. Now, useful, annoying, you decide. But uh, yes, exactly, I heard that. One of the ones that we have in our channel that I built was table flip or flip table 
So like you can always just, wherever you are, flip a table. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. And does anybody have any questions about that ridiculous thing I just showed? Go for it.